I welcome each one of you to this chapter 2 of Information Technology for Management. The name of the paper in our curriculum is e-business. In this chapter number 2, we are going to talk about data governance, IT architecture and cloud strategies. So let's start one that is data governance. What is this data governance and what kind of strategy we may have about the data governance is something we are going to study. So what is this information management? In data governance, we need to start from information management. What is this information management? Information as the, as the name applies is in a position to explain itself is the use of IT tools and methods for what? To collect, process, consolidate, store, secure data from various sources, from sources that are often fragmented and inconsistent. So what are we trying to do is to collect it, process it, consolidate it, store it and secure it. This is something we want to do in information management. This is information management. Okay. So, what are the challenges? We should have a continuous plan to guide, control and govern IT growth. Why? Why a continuous plan is required? Because software is changing continuously, hardware is changing continuously, newer and newer versions are being made available, data integration is happening across the organizations. So, this collection, processing, consolidation, etc., etc., becomes more and more difficult. I'll not say difficult, but I'll say that yeah, you'll be having more data to process, more data to work on, more data to get deeper insight into the information systems, into the logistics, into the customers, into the human resource management, into finance, into operations. So, we should have this information management. We also have to have this information management because of uh, legislation. In our country, India, this legislation is not that much demanding. But in US, this legislation is highly demanding. Information management is critical to data security and compliance, this regulation, compliance with the law, with continually in, in, evolving regulatory requirements. So what are the regulatory requirements as of now in US is the one is Sarbanes Oxley, Oxley Act, the second one is Basel III, the third one is Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, the fourth one is USA Patriot Act and the next is Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. So in this manner friends, we have lots of regulations to regulate the data management. For this, we have something known as master data and we need to manage this master data. This is something known as master data management. At this stage, I can simply say that the master data is the data which is being processed, updated, synthesized, used continuously. Second to second, every second, this data is being processed. So, this is master data. So, the, this master data is method. Methods synchronize all business critical data from different disparate systems into a master file which provides a trusted data source. If we consider the term master file technically, then in the software development area, 
it may sig signify something else. But right now, what are we trying to understand? There are a whole bunch of data which is being collected and processed has to be managed. And this management will be done again by the software. And this is being termed as master data management. What are the benefits of master data management? Better customer experience, greater customer loyalty and retention. If customer is happy, experience of the customer is good, then obviously we'll be having better loyalty and retention of the customer. If this is happening, then obviously sales will grow. Sales growth will not be an option, will not be uh, far away. Then accurate sales forecast and order processing will be uh, possible with the help of this. So this has to be done with the help of master data management. Now friends, what are the challenges of master data management? The first one is in front of us. Reasons of information deficiencies are still a problem. Master data management is not happening. Why? The one is data silos. What is this data silos? Data silos is standalone data stored not accessible by other information systems that need data cannot consistently be updated. What's happening? That you are maintaining data in a system. System here means combination of three things, hardware, networking and software. So your system has stored the data in a fashion that it is not allowing other systems to retrieve this data. This data is stored in one system. That software, hardware is not compatible with other. If the hardware is compatible, if communication is not a challenge, even then software is not compatible. So the data stored will stay like an Iceland, like, like an island in the sea. So this is something known as data silos. This exists from a lack of IT architecture. This only supports a single function and do not support cross-functional needs. What's happening? This is happening because some architectural issue is there and that's why this data is not being used by other uh, tools. From where are we going to get the data? What kind of processing will be done? And what kind of information we do need? Let's understand with the help of this uh, diagram. So, friends, sourcing silos, meaning thereby that from where the data is going to get. We are going to get the data from this. Like, Parts replenished, procuring, operations silos, where the work is really happening, designing, building and ship and customer facing silos like sales, fulfillment, building and support. So what is happening that in a ship manufacturing company, what kind of data silos we may have? One category is related to sourcing silos. How are we going to procure the material for ship building? One, parts replenished, two, procuring. Okay. Now, in the case of operations where the ships are being built, we have three things. One, designing, two, building, and three, after this, shipping also. So, every piece of information is staying at one place. This is something known as operations uh, silos and similarly customer facing silos where the customer is in a position to interact like sales like fulfillment like billing like support and all such systems information systems are not in a position to interact with each other so we have sourcing silos we have operations silos we have customer facing silos in any industry whatever it may be it may be a shipping industry it may be a fast moving consumer goods industry, it may be retail, it may be, it may be whatever. Okay. So what kind of data types we have? Let's see. 
customer data, product data, procurement data, contract data, data order, parts inventory data, engineering data, logistics data. If you are not into operations, if you are not producing something, then some part of the data, some kind of data will not be there, of course. What kind of data will not be there? The obviously, engineering data will not be there. Parts inventory data will not be there. But by and large, the rest of the data will be with you. So, friends, we need a lot of data to run the organization. What kind of data is required? This is the data which we require, which is also being termed as information. I am saying data. In diagram, it is the information. What is the difference between data and information? We will be studying in this very chapter. Right now, I am saying that in general, in the common parlance, data and information are being used interchangeably. Okay. So, what kind of information is required? Which is which should be understandable, relevant, timely, accurate and secure. If the information is not understandable, relevant, timely, accurate or secure, then it will be of no use. This will happen only if all such things are working together. If they are not working together, then we will not be able to get information which is really needed in this fashion. If the, the information is not available in this fashion, then what will happen? Then we are working in silos and will not be able to come to a conclusion. So this is figure 2.4 which is in a position to help us to understand the impact of silos on organization. This data deficiency will lead to certain uh, challenges, we will not be able to give customer a good experience etc etc. This we understand. Why this is happening? What are the reasons of information deficiency, data silos, we have understood. Two, lots of bypass data. What is this bypass data? This bypass data means that we are not in a position to use this data for a particular purpose. I request you to read Tech Note 2.2 where a clear example is uh, given. What is the example? A construction company is building two types of flats. One is economy, another is luxury. Raw material is being produced, procured and used for the construction of both type of flats, economy and luxury. What is happening? That there is no accounting there is no information recording about the material used for economy flats or luxury flats. So, they are unable to understand how much material is being used, how much labor is being paid, how many overheads are being incurred to produce economy flats or luxury flats. When they could do this, when they could separate the two things, they could find that the cost of luxury flats was higher and the price which was being charged was lower. So, the, the luxury flats were being sold at a loss and this loss was being made up by the economy flats. This is something known as lots of bypassed data. We have data but we have bypassed certain things and that is why we are not in a position to know the real uh, situation, bypass the data. Then the third reason is poorly designed interface. We have data, but the data is not in a position to interact with each other. So, this is something known as poorly designed interface. Then non-standardized data format. We may have data, but the data format is not standardized. Standardized means what? It is not being kept in a fashion, it has to be kept. And it is not being processed, stored, etc, etc. Everything is happening in a non-standardized format. So, we have to be cautious and be careful about this non-standardized data.
and that's why we cannot hit moving targets what do we mean by the moving targets sale is happening at the moment goods are being sold at a very fast speed inventory is also depleting when should i place the order it's a moving target continuously a huge rush is there think about amazon think about flipkart think about a big mall where everything is moving very fast so your data has to adjust this fast moving pace of data and process this accordingly so that you may take a decision so this is also not possible in the case where we have only data silos.